Welcome to the Daily Crew, episode 20. Big milestone, not 19 anymore, but 20. Uh, your source for unimportant information and other fun things. I am Tyler. Joining me today, as always, Amanda on my right, Ben on my left. We discuss random internet topics, throw in some other fun stuff, and see where it goes from there. Ben, what is the first random topic of today's discussion? Okay, the first one is, if being naked was the uniform code for any job, which job would be the most awkward? <laughs> the greeter at Walmart. Because <laughs> they're all old to begin with. <laughs> yes. Everybody yeah. walks by, you're by, and for the dude, like, you're by the door, so you get the cold air all the time. Yeah. It's also in You know, they swear on the ground, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cold, though. <laughs> I always find that phrase fascinating, grower versus shower. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's real. Yeah. yeah, it is. I saw a comment where somebody said, Mall Santa. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> yes. that would be the, that's bad. too far. Call it 911. <laughs> just be like, yeah, you're just going to have to come with Well, it's the, if it's the requirement for the job. Yeah, but. Yeah. I'm not taking my kids to see no, a naked absolutely, Santa. No, <laughs> absolutely not. But that would be the. I, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying. I'm like trying to think of something that's worse than that. You know what I mean? Like, but honestly, let's be for real. Like, you're not their their penis is not going to be sticking out. No. They're like they're big guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, it's they're true. Their bellies, like, <laughs> their bellies would hide it. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Man, I don't know. I was maybe like a, a like a waiter, waitress. Maybe no. they already do that. They, they do? Where? Yeah, like you can go to St. Louis and like they have like pasties on, you know what I mean? So it's that. not against the law. Yeah. And like little bitty, they're like mostly naked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I guess. What else? Maybe like a teacher? No. I'm trying to think of when people are naturally in really close quarters together all the time. Mm -hmm. That seems like that'd be really awkward. Or yeah. maybe it'd be less awkward because it'd be all the time. Right. Maybe like working uh, in the meat department at a grocery store. Oh. That'd be disgusting. Yeah. Oh, Blood man. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, God. Because <laughs> <laughs> it has a butcher. I freaking, I have, <laughs> I have a picture somewhere. There's like, I don't know what happened this day, but there was blood just coming out of the meat room, like the cutting room. Oh, jeez. And I got a picture of uh, one of the guys, and he's like crouched down, and he's like in front of the blood. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> Just so much blood. It's so gross. Blood, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm gonna stick with Walmart greeter. <laughs> it doesn't see. It doesn't feel. It doesn't feel as wrong as a mall Santa. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. No, that's too far. <laughs> yeah. That's gross. It just yeah. feels icky. Just talking about. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um, what else? But but probably accurate. Yeah. I was a, say, like a zookeeper for like gorillas. Yeah. That's also messed up, but not as gross. Or a beekeeper. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be that. Maybe just high risk, and not so much awkward. Yeah. You know, if you're a beekeeper, you gotta get stung sometimes. I'm like, sure you do. Yeah. So you don't like. So you don't get scared anymore. Well, no. So that. you uh, so you don't go into like shock or anything. Not like shock. What is it? I like, mean, you just have to get stung sometimes so that you acclimate. What you think. acclimate to it or the bees to you or you both. to it. Yeah. Because you're gonna get stung, you're but if you're not ever while, getting yeah. stung, yeah. And then all of a sudden you get like attacked or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly. More likely to have an allergic reaction if probably you've never had if you get stung by like. And, and you would have to probably get stung ahead of time to make sure you're not allergic and you don't get like stung by five and then you then you die on the spot. Right. That would be pretty horrible. <laughs> yeah, probably have to get stung a little bit. And I imagine also, just like anything else, to get used to it so you don't flip out if it happens again or you become not afraid of it. A lot yeah. of times you wonder like, what's it like? And then that fear is twice as bad as the actual thing itself. Mm -hmm. Then you just kind of get out of the way and you're not scared of it anymore yeah. and you're fine. You know yeah. what the worst is? Ground bees. Um, because they, if they feel threatened at all, they just attack. Right. I know I'm not allergic to stings because in my yard, I just, I'll be mowing and mm -hmm. something gets mad and I'm like, oh, it stings yeah. me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Especially the ground bees. You have to like fully avoid them. Like there'll be a part of your yard that you can't mow or walk on. Mm -hmm. A large part. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. they're so aggressive. 
Yeah, I get a lot of we get a lot of like carpenter bees and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, for in, sure. In yeah. our backyard and stuff, and they're they're pretty aggressive, but they don't sting though. I've never been stung by one. I have I've heard and I kind of think it's true that the more you acknowledge them, the more likely they are to to really care. Like if you act like angry, try to swat at them, or like yeah. scared, try to run away. Yeah. All it does is feed it, and if you almost just kind of make it a point to not really act like they're a threat or a target, yeah, then. You pretty much just mind your own business. But they're so aggressive too. It's so <laughs> funny. They'll like come flying right at your face and just sit there. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like their whole defense is like intimidation. Yeah. And um, they can sting, but they almost never do. So you shouldn't be afraid of them, unless you're trying to like kill their nest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't and recommend that. No. <laughs> like Holly Culkin and my girl. Oh yeah, I did, did make the sequel. The girl that be down there. I never watched that movie because I'm afraid. I don't. Never seen I my girl. Never great watch movie. it. Spoiler alert: He's great not movie. in My Girl Two. Right. Yeah, it's a great movie. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, don't watch it. Like, that's an accident, though, wasn't it? Wasn't he looking for that chick's uh, ring or something? Right. Like her yeah. moon ring she lost. He went back to try to find her. Got attacked by a bunch of bees. Spoiler yeah. alert: A 30 year old movie, but he dies. <laughs> and it's sad. He got stung by a bunch of bees. And he's allergic. What was next on our? topic of things all right the next one is what slang word are you happiest went out of style so what which slang word is that? <laughs> that is no longer around uh one comes to my mind is yolo remember he's here yolo, yolo. <laughs> all the time that's a, you only live once right yeah yeah, yeah. um that's the motto dude yolo yeah every day every day <laughs> yeah yeah Drake did that to us <laughs> and it's like what it, it, it dates you because you start thinking which ones. I remember like getting crunk, like yeah. like little down these side boys. That was the whole thing. Like get yeah. crunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was what about twenty years ago, maybe. Maybe Lil Jon early killed it for a yeah. while, yeah. man. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. He didn't have to do a whole lot. <laughs> he made his career around two words. Yeah. <laughs> and he just he he's so cool looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the hair and the teeth, like yeah. I love it when a dude has just like. Like the big is like the big Beanie grill. Yeah. yeah. I noticed nobody says fire anymore. Nobody says that. I do. That one. Really? Yeah. I haven't heard anybody else say that. Now I hear that heat instead of fire, they say heat. That heat. I don't hear. Oh, I haven't heard that yet. You haven't heard that yet? <laughs> no. I don't really know any current slang. I always have to ask Josh, Josh and Caleb, like, oh, what does that mean? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Is that bad? What did I learn? <laughs> actually, actually, I learned it a while ago now. It's cap. Cap means no cap. lying. Like, your wife, yeah. no cap means you're not lying, cap means you're lying. Like, but most people just say no cap. No cap. Yeah. yeah. So you would say something and, and like say yourself, like no cap? Yeah, oh, like, like no you're cap. not lying, or like it's, a, it's like it's like it's like a sub for saying dead serious, or I'm like dead this, dead, you know. Yeah, like it's a very serious. Is there some origin to that? I know. Hey, I know there was a, I know there was a song that. called No Cap by I don't know who who made the song, whatever. But I wonder if that's what made it popular. When was it? Couple years ago, oh, okay. Couple years ago, but like, uh, man, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Bussin. I don't know what that. Means. I guess that means that means dancing or something. I don't know. That's the topic that's of a, a lot of cleaning a table, right? After someone is done. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought that was. Uh, <laughs> Bussin tables. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of some ones like when we were kids. I used to hear all the time. No diggity. No or diggity. Like, duh. Remember yeah. duh. That'd be like like a. Uh, Whatever, right? Yeah. That was a thing. The whatever. Like if you watch loser. Clueless, like if you watch Clueless, that'll probably be, oh, a glimpse into that. I've heard some of my nieces before say that's on fleek. That's fleek. fleek. Yeah. Yes. Never was not oh, yeah. a fan of that one. I was, yeah. That was kind of made me cringe a little bit. What? Is, there was one. Cringe is a slang word, kind of now. Yeah, but yeah. cringy has always been a word, and cringe has always been a word. Yeah. Right. I'm thinking of like made up words. Made up words, yeah. Um, mean really anything, except yeah. for like by context. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Remember, like, that's rad. Right. Radical, that. dude. Yeah. yeah. Rad and uh, that's so tight. Or that's so I say cool. tight all the time. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I feel like, that will, <laughs> I feel like that will outlive us all. That's tight. I don't know because I Donald would never say that. <laughs> really? I say stuff. Okay, so also I say stuff and he's like, "You're too old to say that." I'm like, "My generation coined that phrase, Donald. <laughs> you know, like yeah. don't tell me." What does he, does he say? Anything of slang? Like, well, what is that? Or 
Or not really. I I can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of one word that these kids use that, oh, frick, I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll think of it. One thing I'm, I'm a, I have a hard time with is when like same as like a whole summary of something. <laughs> like you, you'll say something how I feel about this, I feel about this, 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 that, same. Not like I feel the same yeah. or it's kind of the same, like just same. Yeah. It's like I one do, word yeah. sentence. Yeah, I, I say that too. I, I actually used to struggle with that too, like same, like okay. Emma does it all the time, same. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> no, we always go back to the office, but Kevin, less words say. Mm -hmm. You know how he like Why just say starts... many words when you were do trick? Say. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, wasn't it when I think it was Michael and Jim and Pam were talking to him about, about that, and they were giving an example of like, well, when you say this, like, Sea World. Are you going to Sea World? Do you want to see the world? And like, see, by trying to figure out what you're saying, we spend more time than you think you're actually saving. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you guys think that Kevin was a secret genius? No, I don't. No. no. I have one main example. So remember when the, the Stanford branch merged into the the normal ones, the, the Scranton branch, right? And some of those employees came in, and one of them was that that tall, skinny black dude that was an ex-con. Yeah. And they're like, well, what was he doing? He was insider trading. And then Kevin's like, and I heard what he told me, and I did that pretty much every day. So he's been insider <laughs> trading for a while, which yeah. is not the easiest thing to pull off. Also, at the end, he does seem to own a bar after getting fired. Yeah. But they say he's like kind of... Kind of like, and I remember like he did really good at poker, not on casino night, but like in stuff before that. Yeah. And he, he became, as the series went, a caricature of himself. Because like in the earlier seasons, he talked kind of like a typical guy might, and then he became more like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just like as a, as a, as a cartoon character. As he yeah. Went on. Yeah. And then they, the show even makes fun of that when, remember when Michael leaves, like don't become a caricature? When he yeah. already kind of is, like when he talks to everyone when, when, when he leaves, and it says like, yeah. Kevin, don't become a caricature. <laughs> and that was his, that was his, like his parting words to Kevin, which is probably almost making fun of the self awareness of the show. Sure, like, sure. You know you're a character. You're a caricature of yourself. I don't think he's a secret genius. I think he's a secret genius. <laughs> I think I think Michael was also half secret genius. Yeah, he's yeah. a very insecure. Person. You make there's a lot of people that make arguments that like Jim was also like a. Psychopath. We're probably yeah. like a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meticulous planning, the ability to like lie and convince people of almost anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the, the things that he does, there's one episode, I know we would just always talk about The Office, but there's one episode <laughs> where he lists all these pranks that he, that he did. And it's like, when I say them all in a row, they're not really that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you think of the time and the time and energy invested outside of work just to annoy. And get on the nerves of somebody. Yeah, that's that's real dedication. Yeah, that really involved pranks where you mm -hmm. don't like change the time on all the computers on the, all the clocks <laughs> and like move furniture yeah. around. Like it was very involved. Like I mean, it sounds funny, but like who would actually want to go through? I it? don't mm -hmm. think he's a. I don't. Kevin, that's overthinking. Which one, or Michael, or Jim? Jim. Yeah. You yeah. don't think he's a serial killer? He's no. probably not. But they say he was like probably could have been. <laughs> could have been, yeah. That's the difference. That's yeah, the, yeah. And that is a big difference. You do or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> what was next on our... Okay, the next one. This is a shower thought. And this person says, or uh, they think that people treat stray animals nicer than stray humans. Do you Absolutely. agree or disagree? You agree? 100%. I think people treat animals better than humans most of the time. Yeah. And I take a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, when you see a lot of people and this is not me saying I don't like animals it's me saying I like humans more than animals mm -hmm. but there's so much stuff of like save these starving animals and stuff and I, I don't have any problem with that but you think there's so many humans that are starving shouldn't that be something we address with a higher priority than starving should animals be. should yeah. be yeah. it should be but also that's yeah. not like okay so okay I'm an animal problem. lover. And I think, oh, I'm such an animal yeah. lover, yes. But, 
Okay, so a vulnerable population of humans is neglected fully. Mm-hmm. We can try to do as much about it as we want, mm-hmm. but really there's powers that be that mm-hmm. don't do anything about it when they could. Mm-hmm. But they like to bring it up when it comes to something else. Yeah. Right? So animals are so severely vulnerable. Yeah. You know. They can't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're viewed, um, more viewed as help, helpless. Like they're yes. not able to control what's really going on. Like because they're at the end of the day they're animals. They're animals, yeah. yeah. And people are like Ah, you're homeless. Yeah. You did that. Yeah, you like, did that to yourself. It's you're not. not you didn't work hard enough. Yeah. And then you yeah. did. And then I offered that person a right. job, or I gave that person five dollars, and they <laughs> weren't even thankful. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, get off of your charity high horse. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we have like such a mental health poverty issue. That's totally different than animals. Yeah. Because the animals problem. don't choose. Yeah. I mean, humans don't choose either. But animals, I get it. It's messed up. Yeah. But also, like, it's so much easier to adopt an animal yeah. than to adopt a child. It's easier to at least make an impact towards the issue at hand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's not just like you, you see a box of kids in a corner on the street. Here, $5, dollars have one. Sure. <laughs> right? Right. It's, right. It's way, way, way yeah. more involved than that. Yeah. yeah, like I, should be. I agree that I would say humans are more important than animals, but at the same time, like I think it's just two different issues. It's just way too different. Like it's hard to compare because, like, like you, like you said, there's like powers that be that are in place to help out with homeless and stuff like that, and they can only do so much. So it's like if they can only do so much, how do they expect you? Yeah. To do any more than them, but then, you know, not them. I mean, above them. I, you know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> yeah. there's only so much you can do. And then, I mean, honestly, like, we don't even really like invite like our own friends to come live with us. How do? How? Yeah. Why would we invite so a complete stranger to come move in with us? You know, and, and yeah. stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I just feel like because animals just appear more helpless, that it's just. It's one, they're easier to help because there's no one in your way. There's no one saying, no, 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 you can't help that animal. Or, you, should, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can, there's a little bit more freedom with that. Yeah. I it's like, and we're so desensitized to murders. Mm-hmm. So someone say they, they go into a house and murder everyone in the house. We're like, oh, man, that's sad. But if somebody went to an animal shelter mm-hmm. and shot a bunch people of animals, lose their mind. people would lose their You're minds. So right. yeah, yeah. And it's messed up. And like also, like, why does it make you feel, not everyone, but mm-hmm. why does it make some people feel mm-hmm. like animals' lives are more important than human lives? It does feel like that. Yeah. 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 It's it, messed it up. Is strange. You're, hey, but then you're right. The, the reaction, if you try to think like like the news clip of like someone, e- even something as traumatic as like school shootings, those make the, the, the news cycle, but they gotta be really bad to even get more than like a mention. Yeah. But I bet if someone like assault rifled a whole like humane shelter of animals, that would be 10 times the news cycle. There would be what riots a crazy, in crazy, the streets. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, that is a mind blowing thing to think about. Yeah, I, right. I saw a thing in the news where a guy got grief over because he, he owned like a barber shop or something down in some part of town somewhere, and uh, he would leave the door open, and then on the outside of the door he would put a dog bowl and a water bowl, so all of the stray dogs and stuff, because apparently there was a lot of them in that mm-hmm. area, they would yeah. come and eat out of that bowl, and then he would actually, but then he would also like give them actual meats and stuff mm-hmm. like that too, and then a lot of people were like, well, would you do the same? If there was a homeless person that wouldn't leave the front of your shop, if they were always standing right next to your shop, would you like kick them out or would you treat them the same? Right. And the answer is probably probably not. Yeah. Probably call the police on them. And, you and I, know. Think the, I think the point too you both have touched on it is right because there is a conversation mm-hmm. around how much one can do about that situation regarding like if you were in it yourself. There's, it's hard to say like, oh, that dog needs to get a job, get its own house, <laughs> take, take care of that, get to work. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a different, it's a conversation that is had amongst lots of people. Like yeah. what level of 
what level of self control does one have during that situation? Yeah. Versus, I don't want to make an argument. Why does, why does that cat freeloading all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Eating all my food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Taking my tax dollars. <laughs> yeah. That is, a, and that is an interesting conversation. I don't think there's like a good right or wrong. Everyone's going to have their own opinion on yeah. that. But I don't know. You're right, though. I think we care more about animal life than many human lives. It's, it's weird, but it's true. It's so sad. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Just, it's just strange. All right. It's been pointed out a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we ready? What is the next topic? All right. So the next one is like we did in the last episode. Is it another one? Smash or pass. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Is there a theme on it again? That. No. Or is that we'll yeah. find out. Make it we'll feel this yeah. time. Okay. Okay. This, this, this time is going to be. It's going to hit you right. Huh. It's going to hit you right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Okay. All right. Smash or pass? Do we need to explain the? Uh, we give a celebrity and Amanda as the only single person. <laughs> On the panel gets to just answer if she would smash or pass on this various person. Okay, so the first person is Jennifer Aniston. Pass. Pass? Pass. Yeah. She's way too nice and sweet and seemingly innocent. She's like if a bag of flour took up acting. No. <laughs> I said it. I, I no, did it. I said that because that was on, she did it, it was on mean tweets one time. And it just, I thought it was very clever. Those mean, are so funny. But clever. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. it's not really much of anything, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, she is, she's beautiful. <laughs> and she is one of those people that has aged yeah. seamlessly. Like, she yeah. is perfection. But no, I would not smash. Not smash? Nope. Okay. All right. Next one is Brad Pitt. Smash. Especially, like, in... The most recent years with his like style, how it changed when he was with Angelina Jolie. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. So you would say an older Brad Pitt more than a younger Brad Pitt? Yeah. yeah. Except he's really I love him in movies when he's like like interview with a vampire. Mm -hmm. There was a little girl and he did not want her to be a vampire. But stupid Tom Cruise did it anyway. He ruins everything. He ruins everything. I can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but he like it's like, it's like his daughter. He cares mm -hmm. for her forever because he's like, it's just a child. You know a Brad Pitt movie I like a lot? Legends of the Fall? I haven't you know? watched that. You, you would like it a lot. Because if you kind of so. like a little bit more of maybe a, I don't know, of a kind side, like kind of a dick, but kind of, but deep down kind, like a good guy. Yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins also, good movie. He's a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you said that. Smash. Okay. Next one. Courtney Cox. Pass. Same what's up. Is this a Friends thing? It freaking better not be because I don't even like that show. It is, <laughs> I guess. Um, pass. She's too skinny. Too skinny. Mm -hmm. Okay. She runs like seven miles per hour on her treadmill to be <laughs> skinny. It's insane. She's uh, she's cool. She's nice. I think she's a good person, but I would not smash. You would not smash. No. Okay. Next. All right. <sighs> David Schwimmer. Pass. <laughs> what, what is he's wrong not... with the cast of Friends here? I don't even like the show, but like he's an idiot. Like the way he's portrayed on the show, he's so stupid. Is Pass. He, we don't he, even need to talk about this. Isn't he the voice of someone in Madagascar? Yeah. You don't give the him giraffe. Brownie, you don't give him brownie <laughs> points for that. No. It's not all about His friends. voice is even stupid. I think his character on Friends was the most annoying of all the characters. For sure. I would agree, actually, with that. Have, have you guys ever seen the Friends episode where they edit out the laugh track? <laughs> no. It is it is hilarious because there's one YouTube clip. You should check it out. It's Ross is a serial killer because he's talking <laughs> about some, some story about meeting some woman, but there's all these awkward three-second pauses where they stare at each other like I met someone. <laughs> And then, like, a person responds, and, like, we went out to dinner. And, it was, and it's, when you edit out laugh tracks on these soundstage type shows, it's, it's, it's more they're, awkward. They're, there's all these long, awkward pauses of people staring at each other. And you should look it up. Ross is a serial killer on YouTube. I bet that takes talent to not even be in the moment to just... Yeah. yeah. And then wait for the next line. Well, yeah. 
they had a studio audience there, right? Or did they put the laugh track in afterwards? That, I, I think there, I think there right? was, a stu- I could be wrong, but I think there was a studio audience. a studio audience, audience right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there is. Most of those shows do. You could tell by kind of like with the sets look, they probably all yeah. face one direction for a, for a, for a studio audience. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who on Friends is next? They had a lot of guest stars too in that show. I please have guest stars. Lisa Kudrow. Brad Pitt, what kind of a guest star on Friends? Yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, and I like how you did Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt first, so it seems Girl, like it okay. could have gone a different <laughs> way. Good job, Ben. Um, Lisa Kudrow. Smash. Smash? Oh, yeah. well, see, that surprised me. She seems like a really fun, cool, wild person. Zany. Yeah. Yeah, I like her. Okay. All right. Matthew Perry. Pass. <laughs> What's wrong with Matthew Perry? You're bringing up all these men's who are. You say men's? Yeah. They're just like. <laughs> the plural gen- of men is men. Gen- <laughs> these men's. They're generic <laughs> white dudes who have no sex appeal. David Schwimmer, uh, whatever you just said, Chandler Bing. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Gross. I, I imagine Joey's on this list too. Yeah, that's. Let's hear it. Before we get to him, <laughs> before we get to him, let's talk about Aubrey Plaza. Smash. Okay. Was she on that show? No. You, yeah, there's no theme Terrible. here. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, Smash. I love her humor and her style and her attitude. She's a really cool chick. I like yeah. her. Doesn't like I've seen in interviews she's always like that dry, awkward thing, which is which is pretty funny. Some people online claim she had like some head trauma or something like as a kid oh, and right. can't really like understand uh, a lot of the, the like the social and like context and stuff which allows her to deliver just a really weird, awkward thing without in mm-hmm. in that good way in some states just the character that she played. Yeah, herself. I don't believe that. Because <laughs> yeah. she is she does it for the reaction and the humor. You can see it like on yeah. talk shows and stuff. Aubrey, mm-hmm. I swear, yeah, her character in Parks and Rec is almost like this. I feel like it's like it's the same character in everything else she's in. I yeah, mean, I feel yeah. Like it's very similar. She's so good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Like how Emma Roberts is good at being a B guy. Yeah, right. She's really good at the drama. Have you ever seen uh, humor? Have you ever seen the movie? She, the movie she's in with Robert De Niro and Zac Efron. I want to say it's Bad Grandpa. Uh-uh. I've heard of Bad Grandpa. I've never seen Bad, it. It's either called Dirty Grandpa or Bad Grandpa. I can't remember. Sorry, I don't remember the title. But that's actually a really funny movie. And she's good in that. It's yeah. Worth, worth checking out. There was also some movie she was in with Anna Kendrick. Yes. Something, something. Uh, uh, wedding Day. Favorite. Something like that. Oh, yeah, where they go to, like, Hawaii, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 oh. I think uh, Zach Efron, Adam. Yeah, and, and, and the guy from Workaholics. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also from Pitch Perfect. Yeah. He's so funny. And uh, you know my 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 cousin lives next door to his parents in Missouri. Oh really? And like he shows up once in a while, like hang out because you know, people visit their parents once in a while. <laughs> I would yeah. be so weird, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, tight be hole all the time. Every time I saw him. Um, no, there's another movie with Anna Kendrick and Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. It's Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Have you oh, guys seen I, that? I, a long, long time ago. But yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's one of my favorite movies. Like I've watched it probably 15, 20 times, oh, and wow. I don't watch a lot of movies like that. It's good. Yeah, I've heard it's good. Watching that long time, long time ago, I liked it. Mm-hmm. With uh, Michael. Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. There's a lot of famous people in it. I feel like he had about, I don't know, five years of when all the stars aligned for his acting style and career. Yeah. And it's been harder ever since then. Yeah, well, he's been now. He's just like an indie guy, indie actor, right? He's just an independent film. Probably, I don't know. Last he I, seems like he would be. The know. last I heard, that uh, he's in like the smaller, less you know, it. not very popular kind of movies. All, all his characters seem so similar. Very yeah. awkward. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get a kind of like a like a what's the one almost the the straight version of the funny person they always have like the one that's like crazy like super bad right yeah like jonah hill is crazy and then the, the straight person in the crazy duo that like they play off each other or stuff. yeah and he seems like he's always like the that person yes but he does it very well though i yeah. would pass on him but also i would want him to be in a group relationship mm-hmm. like i wouldn't smash but like <laughs> i would love to have that yeah there's one okay okay all right <laughs> Next one, Matt, uh, Joey from Friends, Matt LeBlanc. 
Pass. Next. Lie. Because <laughs> he's just a generic dude. white dude with no personality. Have you met him? No, I don't need to. Maybe you should meet him and get and give him a chance. I'm not. Anyway. I, I think he was about the funniest person on Friends. Yeah. I think he was probably. They had to make him the funniest person. <laughs> and they like they Eddie. made him a friggin' idiot too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my and gosh. Well, yeah, he was the funniest person, but then they gave him his own spinoff and then that show just didn't. I feel like the chemistry of is the very important part about comedy. Well that show, which I know you say you don't like that show that much, but uh, there was an HBO Max special on it. It came out not too long ago, and they were just talking about the show and a lot of just how everything kind of aligned and the, like the chemistry, like you said, of these people just worked so well together. And I think it's hard to have a good, sustained like comedy show yeah. if there's not that natural chemistry, yeah. right? And like, how do you explain that? Like some movies, you feel like people like like a like a romantic on screen couple, and there's like some have like palpable chemistry. Some you can tell have it, some you can tell just don't. Yeah. I think about that all the time with mm -hmm. chemistry and romantic um, yeah. Yeah. in movies because like you can see when someone does have that yeah. spark and that connection, mm -hmm. how do their significant others feel? You know? Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, they actually like that person. They might be in love with that person. Yeah. Are they going to choose me still? Yeah. You know? I like, thought about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that too. I bet that's. And movie like uh -huh. these romantic things will have like make out sessions, like sex scenes, sometimes some more realistic or more graphic than others. I've always thought it's gotta be a strange thing to picture. Yesterday I talked about, right? Like movie premiere, you picture like you're you're dressed up in like your tux, you got like your your wife next to you, and here's here's a sex scene that everyone's your wife's like, what's going on over here? <laughs> yeah. You're like, like, what dang, weird that was thing. really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that, that's gotta be a weird, weird thing for acting. Probably one of the, one of the many reasons it's hard to stay happily married as actors <laughs> yeah like yeah. do you just understand or you know yeah also yeah. i want to talk i know i talk about true blood but anna paquin in the show mm -hmm. the main character um her they're married and have children the guy who plays the main vampire mm -hmm. they were together and they were together like almost the whole time and he was a writer director mm -hmm. and the actor she has sex scenes with like every actor on that show. So <laughs> he's writing sex scenes for his wife with other men. Am I understanding? That yes, right? yes. Yeah. I mean, not just him, but yeah, yeah, he's a part of it. That's... And she like seriously, every attractive main male actor in the show, she has sex scenes with good ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm, and yeah. I'm like, whoo. <laughs> Like he's totally okay with this. That's a that's a, so a fair, very secure person. That yeah. is it. Yes, that's a good way to put it. You have to be very secure in that. I would say so. I don't think I could handle that. Like, yeah, I don't I know was, if I could. I, I, I know I could not handle that. <laughs> I know I couldn't. Okay. All right. Well, we already talked about this person, so we can skip her, or you can answer again. Uh, Anna Kendrick. No. Pitch perfect. You said no. I would be friends with her. Oh, yeah. She's like five foot tall, 80 pounds. I don't know. Yeah. She is a tiny, tiny girl. I'm not attracted to her. Oh. I think she's really cool, great, great person. Mm -hmm. She really is, but I would not smash. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last one Paul Rudd. Smash! I would marry him so fast. Dude. I, knew, I knew you were going to say this. Oh my him. gosh. I kept him for last. Like yeah, no, he's the best. He's so wholesome and handsome. Also, ages seamlessly. Yeah, um, he has aged super well. Yeah, what the world? Yeah, yeah I remember it was uh, trending on on Twitter one day when he turned fifty, and nobody believed it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was. It was because he was also on Friends, right? Yeah, for a little while, and it was. I think on some. It was before the Friends reunion thing happened or something and it showed like all like the cast of friends then and now and it shows side by side <laughs> and it just shows two pictures of him side by side yeah uh, like the same picture because he looks the same he did it 20 years ago and yeah. he was in clueless <laughs> yeah they put mm -hmm. that side by side and it's like what like he's more handsome but he looks exactly the same that was yeah. probably what clueless was what 94 95 somewhere something around there? yeah Mid so pushing yeah. 30 years ago it's man wild yeah that is wild and funny 
Yeah. yeah. Funny guy. Yeah, he, he is, is a funny guy because you forget that he was like an anchorman, mm -hmm. which is you know, the best comedy of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. And then he was casted for like Ant Man, which I think he was a perfect casting choice for that. Yeah. Because he's like funny, but also enough to be serious mm -hmm. and could be convincing somewhat as an action star in the right. I always thought he had, had kind of a funny walk. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever paid attention. <laughs> you should Google. Like Paul Rudd walk. He has been like a strange <laughs> walk to himself. Butt. <laughs> he has a strange walk. I haven't seen any of the Ant Man stuff though. No. Oh yeah, he's really good in Ant Man. I think he, I can't see anyone else being Ant Man but him. I think he seems like in a lot of the movies he does that are funny, it seems like he does a lot of improv. Like yeah. you can kind of tell like he you don't know what was gonna come out of his mouth. Yeah. And like it just works. Don't they say a, a lot of those was it a... Uh, Judd Apatow, like a lot of the ones that he's involved with and does, was one of the first people to do, they just do like five or 10 takes of every scene. And then just like for all these lines and back and forth, they cut it and then just pick the ones that seem like they're the funniest. Yeah. Like they didn't they re-release Second Anchorman yeah. with all alternate takes. It was like the yeah. same movie, but it's alternate takes yeah. of the same scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, I think it's just interesting because yeah. I bet a lot of it's half improv and some are super good, some are less good and just, Yes. Try to splice them all together into the funniest version possible. You're right. I've seen that, like, um, at the end of a movie or something, it shows, like, every time, like, mm -hmm. the same scene, but they're saying different things, yeah. different things. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, God, you're witty. Yeah. You know, like, I, mm -hmm. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's one of those talk about various different skills that everybody has in different quantities, like that, like that witty ability. I think it's mostly, I think you can work on it, but I think it's mostly just a gift or given or not given. Yeah. Like I think Ryan Reynolds is like the best of that mm -hmm. because his, his wit is like razor sharp on the spot all the time and like interviews, he has his perfect lines delivered all the time mm -hmm. on the fly. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do you think of that on the fly and it comes right. out right? When I hear people say they love Deadpool. I always ask, do you love Deadpool or do you love Ryan Reynolds? Right, yeah. Because he's Ryan, it, I feel like it's, De it's, De it's Deadpool played by Ryan Reynolds. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. He works perfectly. He's himself in that movie. Yeah, yeah. I also haven't seen that one. Or really? I there's two, right? Either. Yeah, there's two. They're both really good. They're funny. You'll like them. I imagine I would. Yeah. Okay. That's well, all I got. On the topic, Ryan Reynolds. Smash. Smash. But more so, his wife, Blake Lively. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's one of the most beautiful, what I think is one of the most beautiful people in Hollywood. They're yeah. looking yeah. couple. And she's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't seem to act a lot, though. Like, I can't think of... The last movie I saw her in was, was The Shallows, where... There was that, and she was in some movie with Anna Kendrick from a few years ago. One of them was, like, super psychopath. I don't remember. Oh, that, you know, that, that sounds good. Yeah. Karen Walsh said it was pretty good, but I don't remember. She was in those Traveling Pants movies. Okay. So that probably helped with her being... And she was in some... Which, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck movie where she okay. had to have like a an East Coast accent and she did where really the, good. The town. Was it the town? Yeah. Oh, okay. Where, like a big bank robbery she, thing. She right? was like a drug addict or something. I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, I saw it a long time yeah, ago. I don't, I don't really, it was, I don't think it was very memorable. It was okay. Like half a Ben Affleck movie are not memorable. Yeah. <laughs> half are pretty good. Well. And half, are, yeah. half are not memorable at all. Was there anything else on our No, list? that's it. That wraps up today's episode of The Daily Crew. Please watch, listen all over the internet, podcasting, YouTube, Facebook, all that. The Daily Crew, thedailycrew.com. Thank you for watching and for listening. Later. We the best.